Okay, today we're going to take a look at a video that was put on my recommended list on YouTube uh, by producers called Top Tens. They're quite popular and they do top 10 destinations, a lot of travel logs of different destinations. I guess the YouTube recommendation algorithm was picking up that I like to look at videos of the Maldives and surprisingly enough, this top 10's video, 10 beautiful places in the world that actually kind of suck, included the Maldives as number four on its list. Uh, in fact, the very cover picture that you see here is a picture of the Maldives. So obviously I was intrigued to see what this was all about. Uh, I thought maybe it was just a bit of entertaining, poking fun at some quirky eccentricities or maybe picking up some weakness and focusing on that. But actually it was just blatant contrarianism, taking something that is esteemed and revered as a top bucket list destination and trying to knock it off its pedestal with quite a bit of exaggeration and some downright um, misinformation about the Maldives. So. Um, they are trying to debunk the myth of the Maldives being a paradise, and in this video, I intend to debunk their debunking that the Maldives is anything but a beautiful place and does not kind of suck at all. Number four, the Maldives is like putting yourself in a beautiful prison. Those screensavers of pristine white beaches lapped by crystal clear waters you're always seeing on your mum's old laptop, there's a good chance that those would be pictures of the Maldives, a tiny collection of islands in the Indian Ocean that banded together to form one very spread out state. To be sure, the islands are as beautiful as those pictures suggest, but entering an island paradise isn't quite as simple as hopping the first flight to its capital, Mali. Unless you're very wealthy or have done your research, your vacation in the Maldives could wind up being very expensive or very claustrophobic. Well, uh, two accusations there, uh, expensive and claustrophobic. Well, any exotic place you go can be very expensive if you don't do your research. So not sure that's any different than any other place, exotic place on the planet. And I'm guessing that his use of the pejorative term claustrophobic is that he's accusing of the, the Maldives of being kind of small islands and that is actually one of the greatest appeals. Uh, one of the things that I often describe the Maldives as is, you know that cartoon where there's just a plot of sand and a palm tree? That's that iconic image, that's the Maldives. And that's a bit of an exaggeration, but for many there is a, a roman very romantic appeal to that sense of isolation and simplicity. But let's see where he goes with it and see how he justifies that it, uh, these factors kind of suck. There are over 1,200 islands in the Maldives. The largest, Gan, is a mere 2.26 square kilometers. That means every resort is its own private island, and getting between them certainly isn't cheap. Okay, well, we can already see the standard of research that this video has, which seems to be quite low. This graphic itself here is taken from Wikipedia, and Wikipedia itself says that Gan is the largest island. Unfortunately, Wikipedia is out of date on this matter, and a new island that has been developed with landfill at Hulhumale is actually now nearly twice the size of Gan. But it is a bit of a picking point, because his, his core point is that the destination is made up of tiny islands, and yes, that is absolutely true. Uh, but it is starting to indicate early in this video that they're being a bit sloppy and cursory with their research and playing fast and loose with the facts. Also, they talk about every resort is its own private island and getting between them certainly isn't cheap. Well, um, I will say that most resorts are their own private island. Uh, specifically, the Maldives Complete Database shows that 148 of the 162 active resorts are on their own dedicated island. Uh, but that means that 14 are not. Uh, they're on islands that are inhabited and have other people living there, places you can visit, bigger parts of the community. Uh, and that's also not counting the numerous hotels and guest houses that are not classified as resorts, that are also available on a range of inhabited local islands, and they're also options for visiting guests. I also acknowledge that most tourist transfer between islands is expensive. Very often this is just included in the cost of your total package. It, it's provided as inclusive. 
Uh, and also resorts, if you want to leave your island and get somewhere else during your stay, pretty much all of them offer these special excursions to a local island or the capital Male for very reasonable prices, say around $50. Unless you're cool being trapped around these same people day in, day out with nothing but the resort to see. Okay, so three issues here. Um, you are not trapped. Uh, you can leave the island. As I mentioned, there are affordable excursions to get to other islands, but you can just get off the island into the gorgeous sea that surrounds you with fishing trips, dolphin sightings, snorkeling excursions, scuba diving as well as visiting the local islands, visiting the capital, going for a sunset cruise, or actually it's a very popular surf destination with some of the top surf spots in the world. So you certainly can get off the island and have lots of things to do off the island. But as I mentioned before, this isolation and being away from it all is actually part of the allure of the Maldives. So not sure it's something that, it's certainly not something that most people find as a drawback. And it, Finally, they're missing the one critical element, which is the incredibly accessible ocean that surrounds the Maldives. And a lot of people have been to the shore. It's quite intimidating in other parts of the world with waves and it's deep. And, and yet in the Maldives, it's um, notoriously calm and still and shallow. And so the water is very clear. It's very easy to just wade in and see a whole range of marine life or put on your fins and snorkel and see a whole aquatic wonderland quite easily. And this is all part of what you can do and what you can see. You'll have to shell out around $800 for a 15-minute seaplane flight to another island. And that's just one way. It'll cost the same to get back, and getting back could well mean to an island resort that has nothing for you to do but drink. Great for unadventurous drunks, but pretty bad for anyone else. Okay, well, uh, first of all, um, $800 is a gross exaggeration of the cost for a seaplane flight. There are a few very exclusive islands that have these special VIP seaplanes that are just for you and no other passengers or a couple other passengers and a bunch of amenity like champagne served on board those might be about eight hundred dollars but most the standard um, like this trans maldivian airways i flew in december it was three hundred dollars and that's a typical sort of flight and again if you're traveling to get to your resort this will be included in the cost of your uh, your your holiday um Second of all, if you wanted to get to another island, you wouldn't take a seaplane. You'd take a boat. Uh, there's a lot of boats. There's a range of boats from big, slow-moving donies to speed boats. And, and all the resorts offer excursions that will take you to these other places without ever having to hop on a seaplane. Second of all, the, the comment that there's nothing to, for you to do but drink is possibly just a sad comment on the commentary. If all he can think of doing is drinking, uh, for starters, he can enjoy this, this spectacle of just this exotic place in paradise with the palm trees and the, the tapestry of blues and azure shades that surround you, watching sunsets, watching the, the bats that fly overhead and eat the the fruit that grows in the trees. But if something as simple distraction as that doesn't keep you occupied, there's, there's hundreds of activities that the resorts offer. In fact, on Maldives Complete, I, I have a list of them. There's over 200 that different resorts offer from skydiving, climbing walls, motorized water sports of every type, water skiing, parasailing, banana boats, dozens of different floats. They have classes. There's pottery classes, art classes, dance classes, so you to enjoy exploring a new skill in this wonderful surrounding of sunshine and warmth. There's beach sports, tennis, badminton, squash, water trampolining, a ride on a submersible, go on a treasure hunt. There's all sorts of fitness offerings from yoga to boot camp, Zumba, interval circuits, weights. Uh, and that, not to mention, if you get so tired from all those activities that exist on the resort, you can pamper yourself relaxation in some of the finest spas in the world that have an incredible range of treatments. Uh, and if you get a bit peckish from all the activity, there is 
um, Michelin star cuisine and a whole range of offerings from simple buffets to gourmet food of culinary tra treats to savor and uh, to entertain your mouth. Drink. Great for unadventurous drunks, but pretty bad for anyone else. So, um, I, that is the end of uh, his commentary. I hope that I've been able to provide some more informed perspective. If you're interested in more details on all that you can do and how easy it is to get to other islands, do check out uh, MaldivesComplete.com. Um, and uh, on the MaldivesComplete.com, there's the best of section on the menu. And you choose best of activity, it'll show you the hundreds of activities uh, that are available. Um, if this video has spooked you about having the Maldives on your bucket list, uh, then, then do check out the site because it, uh, the Maldives is a place that I've been going to for 20 years and never once has it even kind of sucked. And it's the case that Top Tens makes is very weak and very misinformed. And hopefully I've been able to correct some of the errors that they've introduced into their video. And I hope you consider, continue to consider Maldives um, an incredibly unsucky place to visit someday. Thank you very much.